Oh, like that. Alright there you guys, uh, welcome to the Chasboy Danport channel as always, I'm just going to notify you now about the latest news which is currently regarding uh, Dan Donker. Uh, reports are suggesting now that uh, the price has been confirmed to uh, get the player um, and sanction him away from Anderlecht. I think this is in the region of between 25 million or 35 million but I think we could possibly now capture the player for 22 million or something. This player, as I've mentioned on, on, on a couple of occasions, uh, he's very good, he's competitive, he's good at driving forward, he's a player that's also six foot two, and we know Jose Mourinho likes tall players, he's got experience, he's proved his point at Anderlecht, I thought he played fantastically well against us in the Europa League last season, and his overall performances are fantastic, he's compassive in that midfield, he's tenacious, He's uh, good at uh, uh, linking up the play with other teammates. Fantastic passing abilities. His, his defensive dis distribution is absolutely immense. Absolutely immense. Absolutely. Uh, and for me, he's still only young, and he can. It'd be interesting to see how he would participate in the Manchester um, United facility. Um, I think in all, he's made eighty-nine appearances and scored eight goals as this Den Donker. So basically now he is the director has basically insisted the move is uh, possible from Anderlecht. Whether Anderlecht want him to stay or not, I do not know. But it depends if the player does actually want to leave. So he could be available down the line. The player that's risen up the ranks fantastically well since 2009. The player that's made absolutely century, centuries of appearances in his, his in his career. And for me, I do really like him. I've watched him uh, play. A lot of teams have gone and scouted him. You know, play, uh, AC Milan have been in there. We know Red Bulls have showed an interest. But basically now, Manchester United basically could be emerged as the front runners to get uh, Dan um, Donker. We could get Dan Donker and we could get Matic as well. But if that were me, comparing them two, I do think Matic is slightly better because he's highly more experienced. But... If we were to get them two, that would be even better. And I think Dan Donker, it'd be more of a first choice than Matic. Put Matic as a backup option and give Dan Donker a runabout in that midfield. Because I think it'd be fantastic in our uh, midfield would um, Dan Donker. So there's been talks about going on this about now. £22 million. And this has been confirmed. So I think now we've got a, a, a boost of hope that we can currently capture the young 22-year-old. And we've got a lot of youth in the team. People say we want a lot of highly experienced, but Den Donker would be uh, fantastic in my opinion. Absolutely fantastic. We know there's other better midfielders out there who are more experienced. You know there's more dynamic midfield box-to-box -box players out there that are so much better. But we're not going to get nine goal because he's, he's signed another contract to add love at Manchester United. We're not now going to get Fabinho. We're not going to get Eric Dyke because Tottenham are resisted and reluctant to sell the player. So... Matic looks a possibility. As I updated you earlier, basically, it's now very, very close. Um, Di Marzio has announced the Italian journalist who hasn't got a lot of things right at the moment. Um, that Manchester United are very, very close to capturing and getting the pursuit of uh, Nemanja Matic. Um, basically, uh, Apparently the delay's been it's gone to a halt and it's been a delay because basically there's maybe bonuses required in this uh, current capture of him. I'm not quite sure. It said something about this. Chelsea rate him as a forty million pound player. Whether we're playing forty or whether we're playing the full fifty, then Abramovich chancing him out and it was a price tag of fifty million pound. Are we paying the fifty million pound and is that the bonus required in that fifty million pound as well? Which will be for the add-ons and the appearances for how he performs at Manchester United. But it should be announced in the next couple of days. But it wouldn't be my main priority. It wouldn't be my main priority. I have reservations about him. He's better than Fellaini. Fellaini looks like he's going now anyway. But I think I think Matty will perform around good players. If he's, he's not going to compliment Herrera and Pogba, but if he's got the likes of Herrera, Pogba in there, uh, our attacking midfielders who are good at driving forward and feeding players ahead of them, then I think he will... Uh, Manager, all right. He's been at Benfica. He's been at Vitesse. He's performed fantastically well for Serbia. Uh, Mourinho's been to him for the entirety of the um, transfer window. So we've already spent about under over hundred million on two. This will now boost it up to uh, if it's forty or fifty million, about hundred and forty, hundred and fifty million pound. Then we'd have currently spent on three players when this match at Shield goes through. But I still think we need more. As I said, uh, we need we need a creative winner. So we still need more. Mourinho wants that current reunion uh, with Nemanja Matic. 
and uh, he currently um, announces. But comparing Dendonka and Matic, uh, Matic's mile experience, plus he's been at better teams, but Dendonka has risen up the ranks fantastically well. And he performs in a certain formation with Anderlecht. His performances are absolutely sublime, I'm telling you. I think his overall play is better than Matic's, but obviously Matic is more highly experienced. So if we can capture Matic and we can capture Dendonka, because there's no other way where the fair things are going at the moment in transfer window, we're going to get any other midfielder than Matic or Dendonka. Dendonka is a possible chance. I'm not fully committed to it. Matic is more than likely now it's going to happen. So basically, take into consideration what other midfielders we're going to get, what we've been linked with. We're not going to get them. So I'd be happy. Dendonka. And uh, Matic would do, and I think we'd be all right. And then we've still got Carrot there as a backup option. Fellaini looks like he's basically going now. Fellaini, as I keep saying, um, is a static um, mid, uh, midfielder. Is uh, Fellaini? I don't think he's very good enough. But it broke out yesterday that Galatasaray have been discussions and negotiations of catching the player. Um, the director's basically um, trying to basically agree. Um, having talks and trying to agree a possible fee for him, uh, for us to sanction him off. A fee hasn't been agreed as yet. Uh, there was talks around £4 million a season he was going to be getting there and maybe possibly signing a four-year deal there. It may not be true, but we need to sanction him. We really do um, need to sanction the player. He's not good enough for Manchester United anymore. We bought him from an average team. He come from an average team. He played well at Everton, but I just... Moyes bought him, Moyes bought for Laney because they used to be together when they were at Everton. He might, he might have been his preferred choice. It was £27.5 million, which was as, absolutely astronomical at that time. You know, he did well at Everton, but he wasn't worth the £27 million pound pay for him because he's hardly ever performed at Manchester United. I, I think he's had some good performances on, uh, at Manchester United, but I think most of his performances have been absolutely lacklustre and I think he has um, been poor. So basically... Considering that, uh, I think we've assumed we may agree, uh, and a fee might come of about ten million pound. Galatasaray are, are, are insisting they want that uh, mid someone to fulfil that midfield position. They're very according to reports they're strongly, strongly interested in signing um, Marion Fellaini. But in our midfield, um, he'd be a good replacement. Then Don could be a good replacement. Matic is an okay replacement. And we could basically get Matic in there. And we could get Deng Donka in there as well. So Deng Donka now is a possibility. So I think Mourinho will have more negotiations uh, or talks about it with um, Anderlecht. So um, we'll uh, see what um, happens. But we need to improve that midfield. The midfield's static. It doesn't drive forward enough. We need penetration in there. You know, that's what we need, and we haven't got that in that midfield, and that's the key area. I think we're okay at the front for the time being. Marino's going to look further down the line in January, maybe to get another forward in. And that creative winner, as I keep saying about even Perisic, in some land still demanding they want that uh, £48 million. Basically, it may still happen. He's teased us again as uh, even Perisic on social media. This rumour, this growing speculation, this rumour has been going on since May about Perisic. We've been waiting for ages to get the deal finalised. We've had two or three bids rejected in the past. But uh, even the directors has, has, have resisted any offers. For the entirety of the window, he's wanted him as Marino. But for the entirety of the window, Marie, uh, they have been demanding that £48 million currently that Demarzio had announced. And we've had two or three bids rejected. And the other day, it quoted out Louis Spell, the Inter Milan manager, had basically said, I cannot keep the player against his will. If he wants to leave, then I can't basically resist to that. He he can he can leave. But he quoted out how much of a good player he is, how much of an important figure, uh, how much of an important player he was for the team. And he just quoted a few things out, basically. And then he basically, after that, stood firm because we were strugg still struggling to meet that 48 million demand and then we were struggling to agree a full-on fee. And then Inter Milan started demanding Martial into the um, current um, equation. Again, did um, Inter Milan, so... And we're not going to sanction Martial either way. We know he's attracted a lot of interest from other teams, but he's going to grow and develop into his game, is Martial. But I know if we do get a left win and we keep Martial, it's going to be hard for him to get that first-team football either way, if Perisic comes or whatever. But um, we're still going to keep Martial because he's still only young. He hasn't been himself since he's lost that number nine shirt as Antonio Martial. So, either way, the di 
he's basically quoted out that it's no longer now not nothing. There's no longer access, asset, a, assets, a, access between the two clubs. There's no negotiations going on. He thinks the discussions has ended, and now basically he's basically saying the deal's off, and he's now fully convinced that uh, even Perisic won't be departing into Milan. He will be um, staying at um, into Milan. Um, will um, even Perisic. I'd love Perisic as a player who was fantastic last season, got quite a few goals, a lot of assists. He's a player that has got tremendous speed. He's a player that can cross balls into the box for Lukaku and Yurashid Sridon. Definitely comparison to our other winners, Perisic would be the real deal. But we're just struggling to get a deal finalised for the player. This was supposed to be done last bleeding week. He didn't have to go to China and he just basically went off to China. We was waiting, it was a delay, the media was speculating it was going to be done last week, you know, it was going to be announced, it never happened, you know, he's basically on a few occasions uh, with this this dramatic start, with this story, tried to accelerate the move, but it's not working at the moment, it's not working and... I still think it, I don't think it's a, come to a conclusion just as yet. I think there'll be still rumours going around about the situation. It did. It doesn't look as likely as it did before, but it probably it probably may not happen now. Marino's going to have to look more in the region at another left winger, as he's quoted out. Bale is going to look at him next summer. So there were talks about <coughs> um, that Fossenberg the other day when uh, it quoted out um, Marino had been in contact with with his current agent, Fossenberg's agent. And um, him and Lindelof currently share the same uh, agent as well, which would be beneficial. But as I said, they stand, they're another team that are standing firm. Uh, Red Bulls, they're not. They're reluctant and resisted to sell any of their players. And Mourinho had contacted. I think there'd been negotiation interactions to try um, and uh, make a potential move for the player and try agree a deal, which was about forty-five, fifty million pound. I think. Potentially, Perisic is better because he's just a bit more highly experienced. But I still think Fossenberg would be good because I've watched him play. He's versatile. He's quick on the ball. He's good at driving forward. He can also cross balls in spots. He's got good crossing abilities. Got good attributes like Perisic. He's 25. He's won Swedish Player of the Year before at Red Bulls. He got them to second place. I think scored 99 goals, 19 assists last season, did this player. Um... I think he's been another team in the past as well. And uh, and uh, he got him in the Champions League as well, such to as Nerby Kite. This is why teams are struggling to negotiate Red Bull players like Monaco and Madrid. Liverpool can't get a deal for Nerby Kite at the moment. They've had bids rejected. We we couldn't basically get a deal for Frostenberg, which basically I don't... Well, we was in for the player because Mourinho had the contacted, but... I don't know where we are. There could be still other possible left winners. I don't even know any other left winners that we're in for. We've only been in for Perisic. We've been in for Frostenberg slightly. And we're apparently with the rumours that are stemming round, which are probably not true anywhere, about Gareth Bale. So there's no potential winner. I think we need to look more in the region, maybe, if we don't get Perisic, to look more in the region for another potential winner. We need that winner. How are we going to get enough crosses into the box if we don't get a good winger? You know, so that's what I mean. And the midfield... How we if we've got if we've got a static midfield? How we like going to stop other teams? How are we going to cover space from preventing other teams? You know to to um, make us look so lethargic, and we don't want that. We need this midfielder, and it's going to take time. Uh, there's still a long time the transfer window to go. I am getting jealous because we did buy four fantastic players last summer. I think we spent like over two hundred million. We've bought two players at the moment, so there is still time in this window to get the players that we want. So, we know it doesn't always mean being a checkbook manager you're going to be successful. Marino's got a good pedigree. He's got fantastic bonds with centre-backs as well as he's proved at Chelsea. So, you just bide your time. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be more calm and composed when we get our third significant sign of the summer, which looks likely now it is going to be Nemanja Matic. Um, but without good news, I think also a lot, quite a few players' contracts are coming to a halt as well. Um I think Herrera's in advanced talks of uh, extending his contract. Um, he's had slight um, interest from Barcelona before, but I think he's snubbed them off. Herrera did him. I think he's a good player. I think he's improved dramatically under Mourinho. Thought he played fantastic last season, but I think he needs to be pushed up further more. I think he's better in more of an attacking position, as I said. But he did play well holding that defensive midline last season, did under Herrera, so I'll give him a lot of credit for that. 
So, um, yeah, uh, that's basically it. And uh, with the Dong situation, it looks likely now that is going to happen. So, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, guys, that's everything up there today. Drop your comments and likes below on my video. Subscribe to Chazaboy Davenport. And take it easy. I'll see you guys later. Bye.